Hello and welcome to the first edition of Always in Escrow, Behind Closed Doors with Colby Birchin. Hello, Colby. Well, I am very excited because we are breaking from our usual tradition and we are starting a new chapter. We are so excited to invite everybody in on this new journey and it's behind closed doors. And what that means is we are going to be talking about everything that's happening behind the scenes during our personal and professional lives. So we're kicking it off. We're kicking off the series with Colby Birchin. So, yeah, we, you know, we're getting such great feedback from the show and people just want to know more about us. So this is going to be a great segment, you know, about me. We're going to do one about you. Um, So I wanted to cover some things because right now we just got off of spring break, which I know my kids are back in school. I know your kids are back in school. Um, Thank goodness. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I feel that the next step, especially because people know that I'm a luxury realtor and right now my season's going to begin because a lot of the families near you are going to be flooding down to South Florida to get their kids into the school season starting in August. So they start to look for properties now that spring break is over. So I am very busy right now. But I want people to know, you know, just whatever market they are in, whether it be a condo, a house, a townhouse, um, I am actually seeing some great pricing. The market has come down a lot, Serena. It's it's not like where it was about nine months ago to a year ago. It, there's really some bargains because there's competition. And now the game has changed. So the few buyers that are out there, the sellers want to try to attract, you know, to them so they could either they're offering um, seller financing, they're offering uh, maybe furniture included, but they're definitely offering great pricing. So that's what I wanted to really cover and tell people, hey, first of all, if you're reaching out to me, I'd love that so I could help you navigate through these hard times to get the perfect home. But there's definitely opportunity. Amazing. And Colby really is totally tuned into the market to that, you know, all of South Florida's neighborhoods. So let's just talk about neighborhoods, um, for example, and your specialty areas right now, because you have also really been bringing a lot of people down to Miami. And I just let's talk about your primary focus, your backyard, and, um, you know, these great up and coming neighborhoods. There's something to be said always, you, you can't change a location. Um, you know, I was talking to a client yesterday that I was doing a deal with and we were talking about the house was gorgeous, absolutely done to perfection, which is, I love that, but the location, not so great. I'd rather get a better location, meaning school districts, like style homes in the neighborhood, just not one that's gorgeous. And then like you have a shack next door. I don't particularly like that. Um, Will it change in the future? Yeah, but we just don't have that, you know, that ball and to see when it's going to change. Um, So I do I do love finding these little niche neighborhoods that are up and coming and still a great value with a good school district. Um, So always remember location. You can't move a house. So maybe get the house that's in the better location and redo it rather than the house that's redone in the worst location. Amazing. So when you are looking at these properties, what do you look for? What are like design features that you are always kind of like tuned into right out of the gate? I'd love to know from your lens what you're looking at. You know, it's funny when I bring a client and the client really doesn't really focus in on the bad stuff. I'm looking at the bad stuff. They're looking at the details of the finishes, which is great. That's what they should be doing. But I'm looking at the flow. I'm looking at 
Where did the seller spend the money? Did they spend it on the secondary bathrooms? Did they spend it on the flooring? Um, I look up at the ceiling. Are there any discolorations in the ceiling? Just maybe there's a roof leak. You just, you know, the buyers aren't looking at that stuff. They're not walking in and like looking up. They're, they're really looking. Oh, ah, look at that countertop. Look at that. They just don't look. So I'm looking at flow. I'm looking at a little bit of the bad details per se. So that's what I'm really focusing in on. That's amazing because you truly are the expert. Um, yeah, in your over 22 years of experience, you've seen, I mean, so many properties. Tell us more about your perspective when you are also like seeking out new properties that are just like being listed right out of the gate. The first thing I'm really doing, I'm not going to give away all my little tricks because I want people to call me and they don't want them to give it to their realtor. But the one thing I will tell you is, would Colby buy it? Would Colby live in it? I have always done that. And in my, I think I'm pushing 24 years in this career. Oh my but, gosh. Let's, let's yeah. reframe that <laughs> over 24 years in the business. I would say there's maybe been two to three times I told a client Colby wouldn't do that. I just, I want to feel like I would put my money there. And if I don't feel it, I definitely tell my clients that because I want the repeat business. I just don't want to be that realtor that just sells, sells, sells. You will not get that friend or family because I want them to be able to say, Colby looked out for me no matter what. He had my back. He told me what was negative. So that's huge for me. Um, and I've been that way since I started. So that's what I would say is my tip. Would Colby live in it? What would Colby do? WWCD, what would Colby do? Um, let's talk about your discerning eye because you grew up in a design household. You grew up with high design in luxury homes, being exposed to luxury homes. Can you tell us what you are, well, kind of the trends of the moment right now as far as design concepts, as far as upgrades that you are seeking out for your clients within their home once they've bought it? I have to tell you, I was with a good friend of ours. I can't really divulge who it was, but um, I was showing them property over the weekend and we went into this one home. It was so magnificent. He called it farmhouse contemporary. I haven't seen a farmhouse contemporary. It was chic and elegant and rich. Um, from the front door, you felt this warmth when you walked in. The huge wood plank, wood floors, wide plank, sorry, wide plank, wood floors. That was like setting the tone when you first walked in. And not just straight. They had it straight. Then they had chevron. They had it all with the wood floors. Um, the newest thing are hi-hats that are like little pinhole hi-hats. They're teeny tiny. That's huge right now. What are those? A, I'm not, I don't know about that term. So hi-hats are lighting in the ceiling. They're usually circular, but they're like a nice size ball, let's say. This was elegant contemporary, like a little uh, penny or oh. quarter, quarter size hole for the light to come out. It's like Ooh. recess lighting, but it's like tinier and just like, like correct a coin size. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, that that's just money. That's chic. Yeah. Um, and then what was really, really phenomenal, the kitchen was built out, but they did the same cabinetry, which people do a lot of that these days, but they did this whole wall of cabinet. It looked like everything was a refrigerator or a freezer, but actually one was the pantry. One was this hidden door to get back into the pantry. So you opened it, you thought you were opening the refrigerator, but it was a doorway to get into the pantry. It was unbelievable. Oh, that is so hot right now. Those hidden pantries, those yeah. nooks. I mean, that is every home chef's dream. I mean, really, like a home manager, like, I mean, that's like butler style, you know, yeah. you hide everything for a party in there and you have it all set up or all the snacks for the kids are in that like tucked away. And oh, that's so great. I love that. You know, and a lot of the people are doing um, accented ceilings. So 
you don't do it in every room, obviously, but like one of the bedrooms, and I think I put it on my story this week, they had a wood ceiling. I, it was so beautiful. You know, you felt like you were maybe in Colorado or, you know, somewhere that you want to just bundle up. Aspen. Um, yeah. So these are just really high end finishes, but you know, a lot of people could do that. You don't have to have a high end home. You really could do all these little finishes. Adding wood to the ceiling is not that costly. So there are tricks to the trade. Amazing. Yeah. You know, you're talking about that farmhouse chic, and that just makes me think of the Hamptons and that yeah. the Hampton style. They really, I mean, I think that it's been forever kind of that look. Um, I can think about the Hamptons and then also throughout Colorado, that kind of chic farmhouse look and really elegant. I can't believe it's coming to Florida. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 definitely making its migration. Um, but it definitely, um, you know, I've told you this, Florida, South Florida in general is the Mecca now. You know, we went downtown Del Rey this weekend for dinner and we went to the hot spot. The Ray Hotel has three hot restaurants, but we went to Akira back. I hope I said his name right. Um, he opened a restaurant. This guy, Sushi galore but the flavors were mouth watering i don't know what i was putting in my mouth with the sushi but it was explosive and delicious at the same time uh he has he has restaurants all over and it just it's really says a lot to delray beach that he opened a restaurant here um he has them all over the world he has them in dubai um he is everywhere so uh we had a really nice time going there this weekend well, I would say that behind closed doors, Colby is definitely eating good food because you are a self-proclaimed foodie. You love seeking out hot spots, but you also love seeking out a great meal, a delicious dessert, right? So do they have any de good desserts on the menu or is it all about the entree? You know what? It is all about the entree, but they did have some great desserts. But um, the, the people we were out with are uh, very fit and uh, we weren't having dessert that night. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I do want to tell people that, you know, with our success in this podcast, we are not going to set the date yet. But be on the lookout, and we're going to keep on talking about this. Um, we are setting something up for the end of the year, and it's going to be like a casual get-together um, that we are going to have some of our people that we've had on the podcast. Our vision is that we're going to have an intimate gathering, some of our closest friends and our guests that we've had on the show this season. And, and we're going to invite all of you into this wonderful space where we're going to chat, we're going to learn, we're going to talk, and we will also enjoy a meal together and spend some time really just kind of getting to everything that is at the heart of our podcast, All Lives in Escrow, which is living your best life learning, educating ourselves daily. And, you know, we'd love to hear from you what you'd love to see. And we can't wait to tell you more about it. We're curating a fantastic, fantastic event. Well, thank you, Serena. I, uh, I appreciate you. And to our audience, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you for listening every week. Every Tuesday, we drop a new episode. And we're going to be dropping these little episodes during the week as well. So if you have questions, how do they reach us, Serena? Well, you can find us all across social media on Always an Escrow podcast. You can email us at alwaysanescrow at gmail. And I want to just give a shout out to Colby. Colby, put it out there. You are our featured guest today. We went behind closed doors with you. For anybody that wants to talk to Colby one-on-one, -on -one, please reach out to him directly. And... I know he'd love to hear from you. Always, always ready to help someone. 